I know one thing. Someone in Germany is getting fucking fired. Because these are the NDH-30s. Um, you may recognize them. Hold on. As the... Oh, God, I hate that. Open back version of the NDH-20s. NDH-20s is the only headphone I own two pairs of. And I paid... Well, I didn't pay full price for both because I got one on sale. But I paid for both. I needed two. NDH-20. I needed two. Because these are the headphones that come out when it's time to do a sound demo, whether it's speakers or headphones. And then when I'm done with that and I download all those clips up to my computer, guess what headphone I want to put on to do the mixing and mastering of the, the, the finalized wave with any EQ corrections? NDH20s. Neumann NDH20s. Neumann makes microphones, very expensive microphones. And this was their first headphone. And Sennheiser's their parent company. Are they still? I don't know. Then Sennheiser sold off their their uh, what's it what's it called when people are just peasants in the street, uh, uh, residential? No, though they have the commercial end and they have the consumer. That's it, just consumers. And Neumann is not the consumer brand. Neumann is the brand for professionals. So I'm pretty sure Sennheiser still is partner with them and owns them. So what these actually were were a set of HD sixes. Sennheiser made a headphone called an HD six with a weird like volume knob or bass knob and it was like it was, it was a joke it was like a joke headphone it wasn't very good but it was really nicely built so neumann came in and said we're going to use that i can't do a german accent <clears throat> nine we're going to use the frame and build a headphone and neumann made the ndh20 and just like the road if you saw my review to the road uh, nht nth 100 that was the first headphone by a company that usually makes microphones and it's fucking spectacular. The reason I was so in juiced for the road is because of the Neumanns. Because this was the first headphone made by the microphone company and it was fucking astonishing. It was $500, now $550. And the first question everyone who saw the NDH30 come out said was, oh, comfortable looking pads. Seals, quick, take the pads off the NDH20, which was their biggest downfall, and try them, try the NDH30 pads on the 20s. Turns out they're not very good. Sorry, disappointment. So these are an open back set of headphones, and these pads are very, they're still stiff, but they're open. They're, they're, they're like a, a nice velour. And when you take a closed headphone and make it into a basically open headphone via the pads, it screws up the, the sound, it just does. And so I put them on, I'm like, oh, this is not bad. Oh, there's no low end, oh, the highs hurt me. So they just, the thing. Knowing that you people, you people, you people with the openness, it's the whole point of the wallpaper is open, um, will not stop. I managed, I was digging through just pads and I grabbed like three of them. And I tried one pair and I was like, eh. I tried this pair and I put the other pair on the fucking shelf because I found a pair of fucking pads that works for NDH20s. Slight side quest. The side quest here is to find more comfortable pads for NDH20s that still make them sound nearly as good. Not 100%, but nearly. Because these pads are literally... Like, you can put these on the front of your car. You know, they see those bumper buddies when you get into, like, accidents in New York. People wrap their cars in, like, rubber. One pair of pads would do the same job because they're, like... These actually require warmth. Like, you have to put them on a hot amp to warm up, to get soft enough to be even remotely comfortable or wear them for 20 minutes. So by the time they're comfortable, your head's numb. So this pair of pads I found um, actually works great. They fit in the slots, or you can you could do the whole uh, lips that grip thing and stretch it over the entire cup. And they're huge, and they're protein leather, and I don't know who fucking makes them. I'm not joking. I've been in contact with three people. I was like, Ryan from Mod House. I'm like, hey, you sent me pads, and these are Nexos pads? Are these your pads? Um, I looked through the ZMF website and went to the Patriots chat. And everyone's like, you're not brainwaves. You're not veering pads. Like, no, I don't know what pads these are, because they have like a slight... A slight lip. I feel like they might be ZMF pads because I just reviewed the Atrium and I did a whole pad swap thing. And I feel like since they're not labeled, because every other pad in my entire house, if I if I, I literally label it, because I've learned my lesson, but obviously not, because these weren't labeled. These are the Xenon pads, by the way, for the T60 Argons, and you should totally fucking have them. Um, anyway, yeah, I found NDH20 pads that work. And uh, I'll, I'll, I'm gonna, I don't know what they are. <laughs> I'll figure it out. Maybe before this video goes live and I could put it in the description. Um, or you could just yell at me for being a fool. Anyway, let's move on to the, the fucking stars of this show. The That Wallpaper 
what the fuck? Like, cover all this, see the glasses. You see a German scientist coming straight out of the lab after rigorous testing for the most pure sound possible. And all of a sudden, boom, she's wearing that. That's NDH30s. I bought these because no company sends me this shit. And this is before the $10,000 buying spree thing. So this was $650 of hard-earned money. Money that could have gone towards pierogies, Costco steaks, an extra chest freezer, installing my mini splits, feeding the cats in the garage, any number of things. But no, I had to do this. And it, there was, there was, I wasn't actually enthusiastic because I'm like, well, I know what NDH20s are and they're very linear. And I love them as the work headphone. They're a work headphone. You put these on to work. I, sometimes if you plug them into a tube, I've got the TA26 tube amp here. You plug them into a tube. I've got this heart audio cable, which was custom made for this one that works. And it was like, you know what? I could have some fun with these. They're still not the most comfortable because keep in mind, I was still using the stock nightmare pads. These are the nightmare pads. These are the Jesus on the cross with the crown of thorns pads. Like you're gonna use them because this was good enough that it required you to be in pain. But now you don't have to if I figure out what that is. Um, so I was like, eh, do I really want a slightly more comfortable, still very neutral sounding set of NDH30s? It's so much more money. Because these were 500, this was coming out at 650, just to fucking remove the sides. Now these are 550, so that's only a $100 difference, which doesn't help, inflation sucks. And then I got them. I ordered them, I finally I put out a poll and everyone was like, yeah, buy them. Or No, actually the poll on YouTube and the, and the thing was like, nah, don't bother Zeos. And that was my feeling. I was like, nah, don't bother Zeos. We know what they're gonna sound like. They're gonna sound like NDH20s, but open back. Wrong again. These are the most amazingly audiophile, fun fucking German thing ever, ever, ever. They just take like, DT 1990s were like my gold standard of like open back, professional German, you know, listening conditions. You're in a studio. Ooh, ooh, there's a slightly different pads. Well, this is more German. These are somehow more German, although I don't know if they're made in Germany, actually. Although I, I'll tell you where they show. You want to know how I know this is very German? Because I think it's under the left ear cup. Yes. So you have to take that off to see it says... Jorg Newman GmbH Leipziger Str 112 10117 Berlin Germany uh, see literally there's no other writing on it except for Neu Neu Neumann here that's that's where they put it you have to take the pad off to access that which here are the pads uh different from the stock pads in every way shape and form except for that stupid lip because it's the same cup so they actually do like just swap out you've got this is very dense murder foam. No one likes it. This is much softer. It doesn't feel expensive either. This feels like a kind of like a cheap, like ring pad, like you'd find in a $100 headphone, but oh my God, is it just so much more comfortable? This is more comfortable than standard Bear Dynamic gray pads, which is hard to beat because Bear Dynamic gray pads are really fucking nice. And if you, even if you're like looking for like upgraded pads, like when I did that whole uh, Dakoni shootout, you gotta have a really good reason to change the pads. Also, the lip is extremely small, which is another German thing. It's like, well, you just have to have more precision hands to put it on, American man. And I'm like, shut the fuck up, I'm doing it. So yeah, this is like a level four pad install. And I do pad installs a lot. You have to really be very delicate. Let's see, look, it's popping out here. You gotta like hold your thumb. Can we get back to where they sound? Because I want to put them back on my head. So I got these, and usually the, the process for getting a headphone is you unbox it, you go, ooh, you bring it down, you put it on the burning rig, and you forget about it for three weeks. But all right, people want to, I'll, I'll listen to this. On my phone, I think I put it on my phone, in the unboxing. I'll see if the unboxing is out. If it's not out, I'll try to push the unboxing out more, more on time, because people seem to, there is an unboxing channel, I do all that. And I was like, oh God, there's sound stage and, bass like fun bass and it's creamy and then i put on a song that sucked and it still sucked because that that's the line that these are drawing in the sand some headphones the, the meze lyrics two thousand dollars everything you play through them you could record on an old nokia flip phone you pissing in a toilet 
in Brazil. And just the sound of it going through the microphone and you played it back through lyrics, it sounded like heaven. Good headphones, or if you want to say good headphones or more adult headphones, are supposed to tell you your music is shit. And while that is not the greatest thing ever for people who have very, very taste in music, like me, it's nice to know that the headphone isn't lying to me. The lyrics lie to you beautifully. I want, I love the Meze lyrics because they lie to me. They say this song, this prodigy song, that was recorded way too high, and it's beautiful. These don't do that. But here's the thing. Some headphones that do that whole, like, tell you shit shit, make it miserable. Whereas with the, with the NDH-30s, if I put them on and I shuffle through some tracks... Hold on, I can't stop dancing. Oh, Leonard Cohen. So he's not poorly recorded. Ooh. Ha. What is the competition to these? Because if I come to a bad song, I got a uh, Wally is a good song. Daft Punk is all good. Come on, there's got to be some shit here. Transistor's amazing. Oh, the humming. Maybe I don't have bad music. Wait. Aloe Black. Is he bad? No, not Aloe Black. There's another one. Actually, this is pretty bad. No, bad, bad, not good is terrible recording quality. It's so over-recorded. So this sounds fun and imposing and sounds like shit. But I'd still listen to it because it's it's being presented in a way. It's kind of like watching a bad movie. Like if you're watching a bad movie on a 50-inch TV with TV speakers or maybe a little sound bar, it's like, change this movie, it sucks. But even if you're watching a bad movie, on a 150-inch project, projection screen with the most amazing surround sound, you might stick through that movie because the experience alone is worth it. That's these. These are listening and watching anything you want, even if it's bad, just an amazement of how it's presenting the sound. And it's hard for me to come to terms with that because it's a Neumann and it's German and it's supposed to be very, very clean. I talked to DMS, DMS has had these. And he's like, oh, I love those headphones. I wouldn't recommend them for mixing and mastering. I kind of agree. I kind of agree. I can't fully agree with DMS. If I do that, the whole world cracks in half and we split apart into the solar system and everyone dies. So, but I kind of agree. I would market these these Neumann and DH30s, not as some sort of studio-only headphone. Forget that. Fuck that. That was the 20s. The 20s had their day being a studio headphone. If you're a professional audio creator, you want you would start out with uh, Sennheiser HD280 Pros. You could work your way up to the Mackie uh, MC450s right over there, the open back ones, which I don't hit off the wall nearly enough. And then they were like the DT1990s and the Neumann NDH20s, and that was about as much as you ever needed to spend. Maybe the Tim Socks for two grand is like, if you want to show off. Do these fit into that list though? Because I'm having way too much fun. All those headphones just listed are very good headphones, but they're not fun. And somehow Germany came up with a fun, properly dressed headphone for doing what, it's like you could cheat. If you got a budget to buy headphones to do monitoring work, buy the fucking 30s. Because I can't stop ba like bash, like just swinging away with them. They're spectacular. And they're a 38 millimeter driver. They're not even a 50. Most headphones are like 50 millimeter driver, 50 millimeter drivers, five centimeters. I don't know what that is in American freedom units, but it's, it's not big. 38 millimeters is a small, easy small. And I was impressed at what it could do in this, but it's a closed back, so okay, it's closed back, a little less freedom, it's, it squeezes it down, they do a whole bunch of shit with this, with like this extra foam lip. If you, In fact, I think one of these is kind of peeling off, you want to see the driver. Oh, there you are. Look how small you are, you're just a tiny little baby. Little tiny drivers. So you think that they would make a bigger driver for the open back, nope. Same exact driver. All the numbers change. In fact, excuse me, miss, I have to uh, go back down here. So impedance changes. This is how I know they fucked with it. Same size driver, 38 millimeter dynamic with unity magnet, fine. 150 ohms, 120 ohms. 
That doesn't change unless you actually physically change something. Also, this claims five to thirty-five thousand, five to thirty thousand hertz on the twenties, and this claims twelve to thirty-four thousand hertz. So can't do as much low end, although five is ridiculous. I don't know if I ever get five out of that, ever, never. But up to 12, because they're open back. Same power requirements. The SPL, the sound pressure level, is 10 decibels more sensitive on the 20s. And they're not easy to drive headphones, making these extra not easy to drive headphones. And also these claim to have total amount distortion of one third of what those do. These claim better total amount distortion. Um, I also want to read some one review. Because I go to this, if you go to the Neumann NDH20s, for some reason there's only 14 ratings. These have been out for fucking years, and I've sucked their dick for many, many years, just publicly. 14 reviews, uh, four and a half stars. So I go look at these new ones that I bought, and there's four ratings, three and a half stars, and I'm like, why? So if you go to the actual ratings, apparently all the rating, three of the ratings are five star, like I would give them and will give them, and one is a one-star rating. And I just want to point out that this is important and why you should look at an Amazon page and don't say, oh, it's only a three and a half star headphone. Because this guy might have bought them and given them one star. I'm gonna take the camera off my head because I want you to read this for yourself. All right, all right, where is it, where is it? Eat comforter fell off within a few days. And it's a picture of the ear pad in, in his hand. The eat comforter, the eat comforter, it fell off. And I guess that thinks he thinks it's broken, so one star. What the fuck? What the fuck? Can I report this for abuse? That's a... No! July 13th. No. The Eat Comforter, d d it can come off, and you put it back on. I mean, it's difficult. It's a level four. I mean... <sighs> okay. Let's talk about this headphone as if you've never seen the NH20, because I'm assuming some of you have never been here before. Hi, this is your first Zio Reviews. I'm Zios. There's always a hot waifu. You can get them in the Rosilio Sync Horde or use the code to paste into Imager. Um, the changes every time. You can check out my Patreon and subscribe to it to see these reviews early. And the Neumann NDH20s are weird. And the Neumann NDH30s are the same weird, if not weirder. So firstly, the wire's on the wrong side. Every other headphone on the planet fucking Earth. Do I have any, like, one-sided headphones here? Fostex T60RPs, which are the Argon mods. Left side wire. Double wire, double wire. Most headphones that are one side wire, like Tigers, like the AKGs, like any number of those motherfuckers over there, when you have one wire, it's always on the left. Or, or... You can make it so they can plug in either side, like the uh, HER9 does. Plug in either side. That's fine too. A bunch of portables do that. For some reason, these are wired on the right. That means if you're used to wearing headphones and you see them on the table like this, you're going to pick them up and put them on your head with the wire on the wrong side. So don't. Don't do that. What I did in my old pair of NDH20s, which is not this one, it's one upstairs, I actually just took a, a red magic marker and filled this in. You basically need to have these visible and the wire on the right side for it to be correct. And you have to have it correct because the driver is way the fuck forward as I showed you when I lifted that up, it's way over there. So you put it on backwards and the driver will be behind your ear, it'll be bad. So that's like a quirk. Um, the other quirk is probably a good thing. I'll get to the wire, the actual wire, the wire, the <laughs> wire in a second. But these are folding. These 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 fold up. These will shrink and get down to about that size. That's why the bag they come with is such a little piece of shit. Spending $650 on a headphone that's for professional use where you might be traveling with it places and they give you sheer ladies underwear. It doesn't even have a Lego logo on it. It's just, it's just bag. It's the most generic bag I've ever seen bagged. And I'm assuming since it's so small, you would have to fold it like this to do that. Now, the, it's all robust stuff. This is like, this feels like it belongs in a tank or something with the way this like clicks in with these special uh, three stars so you can't take them out without a security bit set. And you, these are okay. You got heavy rubber here, like really grippy silicone with just a double bulge pad here. Um, it tilts this way, it rotates this way. It rotates like that. 
Problem is the wire's on the wrong side, so you'd have to pick them up and do one of these moves, which is how I've learned. That's a, that's years of using Neumann headphones. Is you can't lay them flat in a table like that without putting them right cup on the left. Because that's the way I'd like to pick them up and do this. You can't do that. Because Germans. You have to pick it up. It's like something the SAS has to fucking teach you. Um, all right. They're beautiful. This is aluminum. This is aluminum. Everything's aluminum. This is really nice, like rubber. It says Neumann here. It's it, uh, a beautiful fucking headphone. Honestly, the the close the open back is more beautiful than the close back, just hands down. Comes with one wire. The Nundi H20 came with two wires. It came with <coughs> this beautiful box, which I thought was the best packaging. This is for the 30. You open it up. It was just presented here. No bags, no unwrapping things. It was beautifully sitting in there. And you had this other side where you'd open this up and you had two wires in the 20. You had a coiled cable here and a straight cable here and then like an adapter, whatever. This was empty. They only give you the straight cable. It's a long ass straight cable too. It's like 10 feet or three meters. So where you're spending $150 more than you were which is now $100 more. And they don't give you the coiled cable. They only give you a crazy long cable. And here's the thing, you're not gonna go out tomorrow, even if you go to a specialty shop, to try to buy, like, hey, do you have an NDH20 cable? Which he has to sand these down, by the way, because these are basically M50 connectors, but thinner. It's fucking wild. Only the Sennheiser HC6 had this single-ended 2.5 millimeter plug that locked, and it's way deep. It's It goes way up there, Morty. How deep, Morty? Let's see here. I'll unplug the 30. I'm gonna grab it with my fingertips right at the tip. <sighs> Holy shit. Way up there, Morty, where the sensors can't see. Here's the new problem. This wire, the one that I had made for this, and the one that I modified, here's a M50 wire, I literally fucking sanded down. These are three pole, one, two, three. And they work perfectly fine in the NDH20. The wire for the NDH30, it's a four pole. Read it on the page. It's for a, a blurb, internally balanced. Cloth memory foam pit. It's like, wh what What do you mean internally balanced? Explain yourself, Neumann. Well, they've added a fourth conductor. They made it a four pole. One, two, three, four poles. If you try to use one of the old cables, it makes it mono. And I know that because I spent about 30 minutes before this video going, why don't these sound right? I just, all I wanted to do was try the other cable instead of using this stupid cable. And it just doesn't sound right. It doesn't sound right. Left, right, left, right. What? So, good news you can have someone custom build you a balanced cable because they don't fucking sell it. Why? What is the point of doing this if you don't sell me the balanced fucking cable? But I might be able to, if, if, I, can, if I can cut this off, which I would cut it much shorter. If you don't know how to do this, this by the way, this is a wonderful technique I learned uh, on the internet where you can just do that and then you can go, whoop, 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 whoop. look, we're undoing that look now it's perfectly straight again i'm other than the ama amazing amount of jank anyway it's a very fucking hilariously long cable which we'll, we'll go back to the, the end that you plug into the headphones in a second but i want to talk about the end this the three and a half millimeter end because it's a three and a half millimeter end with a screw on quarter inch adapter a proprietary size thread screw on quarter inch adapter i have a whole drawer of endless endless quarter inch screw on adapters they don't fit and you know for a goddamn fact you're gonna lose the specific specific quarter inch in fact i put it in this bag and now it's gone so now i have a threaded little tiny internal threads it was very skinny very beautiful way to do it why are you making a proprietary end to a headphone that's already got problems with wires neumann um please stop so I could put a standard 3.5 millimeter to quarter inch adapter on it, and then it looks stupid. So that's another thing. It says Neumann here. By the way, really nice, heavy gauge. Like, you could strangle someone with this. You could just get right behind them. You do a little bit of this and just grrr, wire them um, with this lovely cable. Which, let me plug this back in. We're going to give it a tube because uh, Neumanns love tubes. And then you have this absolutely ridiculous fucking locking extremely deep like so deep like so fucking deep it's like 
probing the inside of the fucking Mars crust. Why? But now that we're done with all the problems, the good things, the comfort, because after coming off of those and those stock pads, putting these on your head, which you have to adjust them again, is like, oh, the clamp is so linear. It's such a, a nice linear clamp. And the pads, while not the most comfortable thing, are absolutely acceptable. They're, they're gonna get warm, just like any studio monitor's pads will get warm, but they're, they breathe. And I could hear things coming through. This is nice. This is nice. And then you hit play on something. And you're like, wow, wow. Oh, Konosuba, just what is happening? Every sound is exactly where it needs to be at exactly the right levels in exactly the right width. These are at the price point for a dynamic headphone, the best headphone for the open back dynamic. I don't know how they did it. These have exceeded my expect. I, I know I love these. Like I bought two sets, spent 500 to one and 400 to the other, but $900 in headphones to have two of them. And these have exceeded my expectations, costing too much in my opinion, but oh my God. Like ZMF needs to worry. Like I'm looking at my wall. I could just, that's my job. My job is to stare at this for a little while while I'm doing the testing and then stare at the desk while I'm doing the review and then stare at the wall when I'm not quite sure what I have to say. Because it's like they're all staring there judging me. Like You know, like when you're a teacher and you, you teach students and there's just hundreds of students after the years and years. And then eventually you find that one student that was the best student. And you look at all your old students and go, yeah, you're all fuck ups. You're all fuck ups. Shit, it's all about the Neumann NDH-30s now. Because they do a thing with sound. I mean, I'm on the tube now. I'm getting on the tube, hit the tube, and it's just like... There's a sweetness to this sound that is lacking in every other professional headphone that's ever existed. Just like a... Like, this is... This is audiophilia. This is some $2,000, $3,000 custom shop level sound. This is, this is ZMF sound, which is the greatest compliment you could ever give to a company to say that ZMF has the sound of audiophilia because people listen to their shit and it's just like you, you pick your flavor and everything just sounds magical through that filter. Headphones are just the filter. The music lives in here. You amplify it and you could do a little bit, two things here, two, but the headphone is the final resting spot for where the sound goes from not being inside of your body to being inside of you. This puts it inside you. And the way the Neumann NDH-30s do that is spectacularly. With grace and poise and all those words that I don't say about headphones because it's like, eh, whatever, just another headphone. Like, I take these over the 909s in a heartbeat. My lovely, amazing Fostex 909s, which are so amp dependent, they may as well be a crack addicted whore. Because it's just like, no, I don't want to use this headphone amp. I want to sound like shit today. And it's like, well, 909, leave, I love you, but you. I don't want to drown you in a bathtub. Just work today. These just work. That's another thing. Uh, tubes make them sound different, a little bit warmer, a little sweeter. I pulled out my phone. My fucking phone. My Sony phone. Uh, the three and a half millimeter. I unscrewed the top and probably lost a quarter inch. I plugged it in. And these are still spec fucking tacular headphones. Beyond anything I could have imagined Neumann pulling off. Because I've heard Neumann speakers, and I've, I've owned two of these, and I know usually what the, like, the sound is. And then, you know what? Rode did the same thing. Rode sort of shocked me at how good they sound. Not just clean and neat and measure well, but like actually good. But that was actually good at $150. This is $650 in German. So for these to, to warrant that wallpaper, fuck. This feels like an old school Z reviews because I am legitimately, I got them, I didn't burn them in, I just wore them for three days. Three days straight I, on all sort of the IBASO DAP upstairs in my office. I haven't done a sound demo with them yet. I probably could do one for, oh, for headphones, but not for speakers because they're open back and I need it to be closed. These are an amazing 
listening set of headphones. The listening. See, what's the best headphone for gaming? These. Because imaging is f f so accurate. I tried not to say the fuck word there. You see me avoid saying fuck again? Great. Because the algorithm. Uh, I don't know what else to... These are comically good. for. A, this is like a German joke, but in the best way. They're so competent. They're like the most competent drunk person at a party. Because there's so much fun, too. Like the sounds are swirling around, just, just in the middle. And then when something happens, it's like, and now I have soundstage. It's like, how'd you do that? How did you transform? <sighs> did I play this song like six times? I, I would listen to these headphones all day. They're that comfortable. They sound that good. They're relative... Considering I'm comparing them against like the entire ZMF line that's like twelve hundred to eighteen hundred dollars, and I'm saying these are half that price, and German, I don't think, I don't, I don't, I don't know what to say. I don't know what to say, other than they're fucking spectacular. Would I mix and master on them? You can, you can, but I think they're they're almost too much fun. Because you start listening to things, and even though things sound off, you don't want to fix them because they sound too much fun. Uh, when I'm listen, when I do the sound demos with my headphones, my Neumanns, with the NDH, I used to just be able to say the Neumanns. Now there's two of them, so that's gonna be fucked up. When I did it with the NDH 20s, if I wasn't having a good time in those, I knew I needed to fix something. Only on the same track, so I literally had it all set up here. When I wasn't having a good time in these, I put these on, and I was having a good time now. So they've lost that sort of like killer edge. That killer instinct of like, hey, this is shit, fix it. Now, this is shit, but enjoy yourself. Sit back, pour out some whiskey. Let's have a fucking party. Provide some girls or guys or goats, whatever you're into. We're just, we're just going to have a fucking good time. We're going to have an amazing time and we're going to listen to the bass response. I need to even, I didn't even like get to specifics about the sound. It's like the bass response on the NDH20 was very decent. Decent. Because it was neutral. And then when you put these big ass pads on, which are mystery pads, I don't know, maybe you could find what well, I have to roll them inside out. How do you figure out what, what who makes a pad? Because they kind of uh, gotta taste them. When you put those pads on those, those get more bass. These are better bass. These are more natural. These are a 38 millimeter. How are they rumbling my head? But not being like bassy headphones, because they're neutrally tuned. God, I want to put these on the head of everybody I know. Frankie goes to Hollywood. Rage hard plus plus. I don't know what that means. The songs never sound better. The imaging is just, it just places you in this sound field of just perfection and fucking kills everything else. So congratulations, Neumanns. You are no longer the working man's, well, I guess the higher end working man's uh, studio headphone. You are now officially an audiophile product. You make me enjoy music more than I did the day before you arrived. I, I, I there's, there's nothing else to say about them. There's literally nothing else. They have no audible flaws. They're not too sibilant or too bassy or weak minded in the middle mid range or too narrow or the imaging isn't good. Everything about them is tens. It's like the Doug score at the end of the fucking thing is 10, 10, 10, 10, 10. Except for the wiring, two. I don't want to do a Doug score thing. Don't make me do it because the fucking the, the sheet would be so long and there'd be so much hate. You know, these have everything I want except for a case and an easily changeable wire. So thank you for adding balance and fucking up the fact that I can't use any of my old wires. But you know, I'm gonna get a balance cable. I'm gonna make uh, Viking weave make me one. Maybe or me anybody, please, anybody, fix this stupid thing. Um, I hope my words have inspired you to throw away six hundred and fifty dollars on another set of headphones. But at least look at this. It's an audiophile headphone that folds. Wallpaper in the hoard or the code. 
linked next to the thing, but it's not a link. Um, links to these, uh, links to all the other things, links to those, which are now $50 more. Patreon and Subscribestar. That's the money I use to buy these, to give you this review, to make you spend more money, so you're all digging your own graves with that. But let's dig a little deeper. Feel free to join me on Patreon and Subscribestar to see reviews early, to participate in yard sales. I'm pretty sure this is coming out in August when the mega yard sale has happened or is happening from the 1st to the 10th. I've got thousands of dollars in stuff that I'm selling. I was even considering selling one of my set of the NDH20s just to show you how serious I'm about these because I would just use these up in my office for the final mastering, but I don't trust it yet to do that, so we're gonna hold off. But yeah, see reviews early, participate in yard sales, listen to lots of sound demos, which again, these might affect sound demos now because if I'm starting to use these, I might be able to master better. I, I don't know. It's like when you get better headphones, it's about to be better at gaming. Can I master better? Am I gonna get my K to D ratio way higher in mastering? Um, $10 a month gets you in the private behind the scenes Telegram chat where those people have known about these things and their greatness for a while because they know about everything because it's a $10 chat that I talk to all the time. You could ask me any questions you want in there. If you want setup help, you can join for a month. You actually stay, it's three months, we kick everybody out. So if you're coming at the beginning of that of the quarter, you could stay all three months and just d leave my Patreon. It's wonderful, but terrible. Please stay. Please stay and help. Um, once you're in that, once you're in the $10 chat, you get into a lifetime swap meet channel. So even if you leave after the first join for a life, you get to buy, sell, and trade gear in a private little swap meet between all my previous $10 patrons. Um, you could also go check out Hi-Fi Guides and the Hi-Fi Guides forum. Can I open up the forums real quick? Hold on. I'm hitting a button. I'm hitting another button. Boom! Oh no! Did the banner pop up? You fuck! I saw that banner. I saw the DMS banner. We're trying to get rid of the banner. It's it's it's. There's just like problems. Anyway, you can talk about desktop playback software. You can talk about the uh, reviews and database of the T cult. What the hell does that mean? For any monitors, we've got uh, sales and deals things. Yeah, uh, music talk. I love the music talk section. I was very proud to made that the very first top thing. Listening to tonight. What are people listening to tonight? Part two. Oh, let's go to the bottom of the 784 uh, post thing. Uh, for the fans of Kind of Blue, Tierney Sutton style, Driven to Tears, um, which is a YouTube video. We can actually, I can actually listen to this. Anyway, check out uh, all the things, Patreon, subscribe, star. Check out the Hi-Fi Guides forum, because forums are a thing still, and we're going to need them more than ever once the rest of Reddit and shit turns to crap. So check that out. i got to cut this off because of the algorithm. Sound demo linked in the description or on the second channel. I'm going to get that out by the time this comes out. Shit, I got a sound demo of these. It didn't even fucking dawn on me. How do you sound demo, I guess, with 20s? On Neumann headphones, on Neumann microphones. Oh, it's going to be fucking wild. See you then.